Hello again, this is Al, and uh, I'm trying desperately not to go crazy with the noise around here, so I figured I might as well just uh, get going on this uh, lesson 53, I think, 53, where um, I've invented a rather silly little class here, and uh, the regular old function, both of which accomplish the same goal, and um, I'm not interested in the goal or the outcome, but just in how to declare uh, pointers to these two similar functions. In fact, the implementations are identical, uh, only this one has some underscores, and this doesn't. So you probably know, knowing C, how to declare a pointer to this function, although you may not know how, given the fact that it's returning a non-trivial object. But let's see how we would do that. Now the way we usually uh, this usually works, to return value comes first. It's a function returning a string um, and uh, it's a pointer to that and then we need a name pf sum say now this function this, this goes like this here we usually put the function name in brackets and then the argument list int int and bool. Now the fact that this has a default argument doesn't change the fact that we have to list it in the parameter list. And to assign it we can say sum. Hopefully that will compile. It compiled, but it gave us a warning. As C language, but UD returns type which is incompatible with C. Incompatible with C. So we need a special kind of declaration, maybe. Let's see. I haven't seen this one before. Oh, because we're in a C function, maybe. Because main is C. I went through a lot of work to make sure that was true. Hmm, okay, yeah. Well, we'll have to make another function and do this in there. We can return the value from there. I don't know, let's just make it, let's, let's keep things simple. Void, foo, void. Let's see if we're okay with this. Okay, no problems with that. Now, according to this declaration, which is pretty ugly in itself, uh, we should be able to call a function. And we should be able to print out the result. In fact, we can do it in one step. Print or put s sum, and then uh, let's say two, three, and either true or false. Do we want? Do we want it to print the result? Let's say false. And we'll do both. Now let's see if that works. Okay. Now, actually, I don't know the answer to this, but I'm curious if I can specify in this declaration uh, that there's a default.
Not allowed in this symbol. No, I guess not. Now if I uh, I gave it the same name. So done. P F sign. Oh, that's the type. I don't know. I gave it the. I'm calling the wrong function. Is what I'm doing. I want to call P F sign. Should give the same result. Okay. All right. No problem with that. Uh, and obviously, I can't use the default. Whereas with the sum function, uh, the default was false. So this would have been valid. The uh, sum thing because it has it takes a default value of no result, but that's irrelevant. <coughs> now, moving on to the uh, to this struct I've made here, which has it only one constructor which takes two numbers, so I again I have to apply two numbers. Alright. Now let's make sure that this works. I'll do the same thing. Uh, either we can take the default or we can say true. Or we can we can even specify the default if we want. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now that does the same sort of thing. Now the question is, how how do we declare? I would like now to be able to declare uh, a pointer to this function and be able to apply that to my ops object. One thing you might have noticed from the last tutorial, if you watched it, <coughs> and it's unfortunate I can't show you here exactly, but uh, I'll, I'll try to remind myself to show you at the end. Um, okay, so how does that declaration go? Again, it returns a string. Okay, and um, it's in the in this namespace. So there's going to be that and a star for pointer, and it's a p member. Let's say member. Member, PF member function. Uh, did I? This should. I wanted to add a const modifier here because it doesn't change the value by one and i two. Uh, it takes a boolean argument and it's const. Now that should be correct. Now we just need to give this a value, and that should work. Should compile anyway. We can call we can call missing argument list. Oops, address. Okay, so here's our if that works. So this is, in a sense, similar to the, uh, um, well, similar to the regular function declaration, uh, in that it looks ridiculous uh, with things in, um, inside brackets and backwards and forwards. Um, 
uh, it's also similar to the data pointer uh, declaration and in fact the way we call it is exactly the same so we can say I'm going to print it out op ops dot star okay and now it takes either a true or false oh first and then the name of our of our function true okay now have I got that right I probably don't that's right this is what I expected see it's again this thing with the binding star here has, has just glued itself somehow onto here and that's not what we want we need to specify that we want uh, we want to take this operation to return that function first and then call it with a value true and that should work and it did mm -hmm. it printed out some and we can do this false again we lose the default argument I don't believe that can be specified here maybe who knows I doubt it no not allowed so the, you can't put the, the, the you can't pass on the uh, the, the default um, property the property that this function has that is it has a default argument that can't be passed on to the pointer that's okay it's not a big deal now in general that's that's a big ugly mess and we don't want to you know have to do that all the time so usually people make type definitions and where the, t the type def name goes here right and I could do that here if I wanted uh, some, uh, something some type I don't know and um, then then later on in your code uh, you can define a some type uh, s and set that equal to this like that but that's much more reasonable you know, I mean you, you can sort of understand what's going on here although you don't see the, the details of, of uh, you know what, what it, the return value and arguments are but it's it's more readable and and uh, in, in particular if you're passing something like this or it, suppose you're declaring a function that takes one of these things as an argument you know so I had a function here's my type def all right. Whoops. That's the type def. But suppose I wanted to, without the type def, I want, and I want I want to declare a function that takes as an argument something of this type. Then the way the the argument list would look, and this is a function taking only one argument, would be. All this stuff and it, that's the argument hidden somewhere in there. you know, and maybe it also takes a bool 
it's very, very difficult to read, you know. It's a, you, you look at something like this and you wouldn't know what the hell is going on. But what do I pass to something like that? What's this Kant doing over here and all these brackets? Just, but if it was like this, with the type on the left and the variable name on the, on the right, like that, then this looks like a regular function declaration. So that's why these type defs are, are quite useful in that regard. Now, the thing I wanted to point out before going on to the usage, I'll get rid of all this silliness, was that um, we had that my strut, if you recall. We had two integer. Um, integer values and um, that we declared a pointer to one of them P M I P whatever it doesn't matter the name anymore something like that uh, you have this, right? I hope that I haven't done that wrong. Oh, it's called P the value. And we had an actual object. Whatever. And uh, just just to prove to ourselves that um, this stuff was working. We we got another int and set it equal to that. And you'll notice that I don't need extra brackets in this case, but uh, and in fact, even when I put them in, oh no, I don't need them because there's nothing following this. With the function, there was an argument list, right? And uh, that that just causes this star to kind of glue itself to this thing, and which is not what we want. In this case, it's okay. It should, it should compile and work. <clears throat> uh, but the interesting bit is this, and it's weird that you're not allowed to do what I, what I want to do. This here, the value equals four, right? That's the offset of this member in the struct. If I put a one here, then it should. Obviously, it's going to come back as a 1. And that says, right? That says that in terms of what, what these kinds of pointers are, since they're just offsets relative to a struct, null is a valid pointer. But when you try to set it equal to null, and it allows you to write this down, strangely enough, I assumed that this was going to work and give me the first value. But when I run up to this point, I got a weird value. And then when I looked at the disassembly, look what it says. It puts a minus one in there. This says put, put zero in there. But instead, it replaced that with minus one. I don't know why it does that. Maybe because some people um, uh, may, I don't know. Maybe because some people think 
all point no pointers can be null or, or something. It's definitely well. I mean, I I could try comparing this with null and see what that says, but I doubt it's going to be a, a true comparison. Because if I try this null, it's going to have to convert the le the right hand side to um, to the same type. It is null. I know this is a little, slight diversion. Well, it's not really a diversion. It's, it's right on top of it. Now, just to be clear, it's definitely setting the value no. But look at the comparison. It's che checking this with minus one. It, you can't. You can make this zero, but you can't ask if it's zero. You see what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, unfortunately, the one thing that would could possibly help out here is a reinterpret cast. Doesn't allow. Say we want to turn this into a void star. Then that that should definitely work, right? But watch. Cannot convert to void star. It's not. It's not. This thing doesn't convert anything. All it does is it's a reinterpretation. So the language is designed in a way which simply disallows you to ever look at this as being no. And the pro probably the reason is uh, to do with um, people writing code where there are so many checks or things being no or you know or not that uh, they that they had to just hardwire into the into the compiler that this value, although the value has to, has to be no, there's no way to check that it's no. Anyway, now as far as uh, going back to uh, this string class, what I've done here, oh, I need the header file. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. That I've added, but uh, it's really not that complicated if you think for a second. These are member pointers to member functions, okay? And these are just pointers to regular C style functions, okay? Now, this name might not be so good, I don't know. Uh, these are things that locate substrings, like stir stir you know the function stir stir uh, first occurrence of the search string that, that locates uh, not a, um, a pointer to uh, a character or sorry a, 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 like, yeah, so not a pointer to a character in the string that matches one or the other of these characters, but an actual uh, a substring. First occurrence of the search string in a string. Okay, so uh, that's what these are. So stir stir type functions. Uh, takes a source string and a substring. Here is a type types of comparison functions, you know, um, uh, like uh, like like this 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 kind of function returns negative if the one is less than the other, and positive if it's greater, and so on. And uh, these, what's an n? Where do I use those? Oh, n compare is um, partial comparison. So this is like stir comp. Oops. 
simple to make it go in the right line. Stir compare, right? This com compares two strings uh, up to the one. Well, uh, up to the length of the, the of the shores um, and returns plot positive or negative or zero uh, when they're equal. Uh, these types are stir comps, but only for so many characters. So that's like stir and compare. Compares, uh, you know so many characters within a string. That would be, let's say, if you wanted to compare the first three characters. Alright. And and I've made these type deaths. Now I have a bunch of functions uh, that use these uh, no, no. Okay, well this one doesn't belong in that group. This one really belongs let's see that belongs down here and this one really belongs kind of up here these ones use the member pointers and these ones use the regular pointers all right so find this finds a particular uh, substring from the, starting from the location whatever using what the the stir stir style function provided. So it, if it's uh, it might be stir stir or maybe stir stir i insensitive version case insensitive version. Um, which I wrote because it doesn't exist in the runtime library. And these are all private, by the way. These ones, you never use these yourself. Those are internal. No, that's just that's the wrong one. Here we go. Okay. Uh, first, if uh, the starting position is greater than the length, return minus one. So minus one, like in MFC, means not found. Now this takes care of all the uh, well. I, I should check to see if this is null. I guess that's missing. But anyway. Yeah. Someone passes in all that asking for trouble. Now this is a C style function. Remember, lock sub pointer returns a regular pointer uh, and takes two strings as input. So you can't actually tell by looking at this function which one it's using. So we have to find some use of it, somewhere where it's used. Let's find one. Here's an example. So, and this is a public function. Okay. Find a substring starting from position n. So step through that. And watch it happen. No, here's the string I've been using actually. This is this is a pretty good one for tests <laughs> for some reason. I, I've got like things that are sometimes separated, sometimes the case is different and so on. Uh now suppose I want to find um, I wanna find the um, this is the one I want to use. Um, uh, I don't know, this, let's say. Uh, 
as, and I'll take the default starting from position 0. And it returns me an integer. And that integer uh, position will tell me the location of the first occurrence of the word this or minus 1 if it's not found. First, let's um, see what it's supposed to return before calling it. We can count it up. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It should return 8. And we just step over. And indeed, 8 is the result. Now let's step through it. Now well, there's not much of an implementation to this. Uh, the only thing that this function does is call that find that we just looked at with this particular value uh, for the substring locating function. Okay. So um, that particular value happens to be the function stir stir. Uh, first, that's not true. And now, now it's going to call this function. I'm going to press F8 just to show you where we can wind up. Uh, it's different. A little bit different. I didn't modify. Oh, I did modify. Uh, we're in the runtime library, and we're on the multi-byte stir stir function. Now, why is it complaining about that? Oops, I don't want that. Make sure. But the dependency from build and that message to come up again. Let's make sure it doesn't. Okay. Okay, it's fine. All right. <clears throat> so, so that used the regular stir comp. So therefore, if I if I try to search for this word, right, it should it should fail, and I should get a minus one because stir stir is a case sensitive search, and I get a minus one. However. You know, not to be dismayed. Just beneath here is a all these things that ends with an I. That means case insensitive. So what I'll uh, I'll do is I'll just add an I at the end here, and I should get my eight back. Press F10, and there it is. Now let's look at the implementation of that function. Well, once again, implementation is exactly the same. There's only a substitution of using this for the locator function. So we're back in here again. And when I step into this one, now I'm in well, it's my own function because there's nothing in the runtime library that does a case insensitive um, substring search. Nothing that I could find. Uh, it does use uh, some stir and I compare and stuff that is provided. But as far as stir stir, there's nothing. Okay. So that's find and find E. And so both of so using the, those pointers has allowed me to combine those two functions into this one function, find, and that just searches for a substring based on a, a locator a locator type function. Next. 
Now, now these these things count the number of occurrences uh, of a particular substring. All right, and uh, I could go through it, but instead I'm, I'm going to go I'm going to go to to this one instead. Find word. Which actually I think uses that. No, it doesn't use that one. Uh, now this one should fail. Oops. Find word. No, oh, that should be default to zero. And so. Sh should this both of these all of these should default to zero. I just added these. The, the reason why there's a parameter is mostly internal because the uh, um, the, the searching and scanning things will, will continue a search after finding something like that count. Okay, so now it's, now it should run, and it should fail. The word this is there, but we get a minus one because that word is not a word on its own. So this is like the regular text search, whole word, you know, when you search whole word only. It would, it would succeed if we put something here, like a, a period, for instance. Now it should succeed because the, the, the word this is a word on its own, uh, according to the rules that I happen to have, uh, which is... Uh, a word consists of numbers, letters, or underscore. That's the um, that's the set of rules I have. So that's neither of those. So it should succeed in this case, and it does. It comes back with the eight. So now we look at the way that this is implemented. Wait, let me check my time. Okay, I've used too much time once again. But let me just. Uh, show you one of them because the, the reason I wanted to go through this one is because this here now you see <laughs> is based on another function called find word which takes a pointer to member function all right and that particular pointer to member is the find that we already looked at so if I walk into here into this function okay now uh, when we get to the, the line, it's trying trying to locate a substring in a string, and it's doing that in case uh, case insensitive. Really. And in order to do that, first it has to find the substring, and then it has to check to see if it's an entire word. Um, and the thing that locates substrings we already saw. So, and we pass that in here, underscore loc. That's a member locator. So when I F8 into this, that puts us into here, you see? Which takes us again back to this. And so we're, basically we're back into the same function again. And uh, it's uh, located a, a, an offset where the word is contained, and then it's going to do some comparing. This is the comparison to check to see that um, the preceding character is not uh, of this type, uh, number, underscore, or letter, nor um, the next character. Yeah, so it takes the current position plus the length of the word, dereference that, 
if that is not a, uh, a, a symbol type, uh, that is, it's. I mean, that that's the good case. It's not a, it's not a number or a underscore or a letter. Uh, then the next check is to see if the right is one of the is one of those things, and if none of those things are true, then it's going to return that position. Otherwise, it's going to continue searching based on the passed in pointer to member function. And similarly, there's a insensitive version of this, and you can guess how this is implemented. This one uses find i, which we already saw. And then finally, in the end, the reason why I wanted all these functions in the first place was for this sort of thing. All the time, uh, situations come up where you end up with a string and you want to do some kind of search replacement. For instance, I would like to take my string and uh, I would like to replace without case sensitiveness the word text uh, with you know textual uh, you know actually the, the, the <laughs> typical thing I might do is that's with that you know the typical mistake that I always make you know This 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 would replace both of them in case not case sensitive wise. Oh dear. Uh, this returns a string. I can print it out. Missing semicolon. Uh, there should be two replacements. However, the word version will only replace the isolated one here and not that one. And they're all just using the same. They're all. You know, using exactly the same code. The only code, the new code that I had to, re to I had to build for this, uh, different from where I got the uh, all the other code from, was this function, which uh, actually is more efficient than the previous one I had. Uh, a search replacing. Thing. You know, it's got to figure out the size, and you know, sometimes it's a, sometimes it's doing copy down, sometimes copy up, and uh, getting rid of the hole and gaps and whatnot. Or in the simple case, when the words are the same size, they just overwrite. Anyway, now you've seen examples of. Uh, Pointer to member functions, pointer to functions, pointer to member data, use of those things, uh, how that can be useful in real life, and uh, you have these functions uh, in the repository to download, with the exception that uh, your set won't have these defaults. I'll upload another set sooner or later. Okay, see you later.